Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and I'm continuing the series Master Databricks and Open Source Apache Spark. We're all the way up to Lesson 24, another video about PySpark because it's such a critical topic. In this one, we're going to talk about creating scalar functions, scalar user-defined functions for your Spark data frames. It's a really important concept because one of the key things you want to keep in mind is making these perform well. And there's a few things you need to bear in mind when you do that. And as usual when I'm doing this, if you haven't done this already, you want to go back to Lesson 9 where we go through uploading the files we're going to be using and creating our Spark SQL tables from those. So you're going to want to go back to that. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. But you're going to need that because we're going to be using some of that in this video. And I have a standard naming convention for my data frames. So if you haven't seen this before, I'll just review it real quickly. When I name a data frame, the first character is either S for a Spark data frame or L for local data frame. And the second character will be P for Python. Now, if it was R, it would be R for R or it could be S for Scala. The third and fourth characters will just say DF. And then I put an underscore in and then the rest is something that kind of is a meaningful name so you'll know what, what this contains. So if you saw something like SPDF underscore sales summary, that tells you that this is a Spark data frame, a Spark data frame that contains sales summary information. Now we had created previously a database which is called AW project. And so we can change the database context by saying use AW project. And I talked a lot about this in my previous videos, but in order to execute SQL from within the Python shell, we just have to call the function spark.sql and then we can pass in an SQL statement. So here we're setting the database context to AW project and then we can select asterisk all the columns from fact to internet sales and then we're going to append a method to this which is drop NA meaning any rows that have NA values in the columns just drop the row and that's going to get returned to SPDF underscore sales info. And we run it. You see it also gives you uh, list of the columns and the data types, which is kind of handy. So we want to just look at a few of the rows. What we can do to do that is take the data frame and call the take method. And then in the take parameter, we just put the number of rows we want. So in this case, we want three rows back. What that does is it executes the Spark data frame and it forces it to return results. Because as we said before, Spark data frames are lazy execution data frames, meaning they don't do something unless they're forced to do it. And the take method forces it to execute whatever transformations, whatever's built into that data frame, it will force it to execute and give you back some rows. So this will give us three rows back. And by wrapping that in a display statement, it's going to look beautiful and suitable for framing in our Databricks notebook. So we can see it there. Great. Looks good. Now, if you wanted to get somewhere in your notebook and you wanted to be able to see the schema for your data frame, you can just use the print schema method. And that will give you a list also. We did see it originally. Databricks is kind of nice. It automatically shows us this. But you may be further down in your notebook and you may want to see it without having to go scrolling back up. Our main goal in this particular video is creating user-defined scalar functions. So first, let me tell you what I mean by a scalar function. Some functions work over a set of data, some, such as sum or average. The idea of sum would be sum up a column and so it's going to actually have to go through all of the columns and all of the values in the set and then give you a total. Other functions work a single row at a time, a single occurrence. An example might be something like substring where you're going to say give me two characters out of the string, like give me the first and second character out of a string. It's going to have to do that each occurrence. Another example might be um, I want to search the string and see if something's in it and also like date format things. I want to format the date so maybe I change year, month, day or strip off pieces of the date. Those are things that are scalar functions. Now when you're doing scalar functions, there's an important project, open source project you need to know about which is called Apache Arrow. What does Apache Arrow do? One of the problems in the legacy sense on Apache Spark was that there are JVMs that run the code on each node. So if you were running say Python code on the node, it would have to serialize the objects, like your data frame, into strings, basically, and then import them into the JVM. And then it has to serialize it again back out so we can put it back into your 
Python code. So this work of serializing and deserializing adds a tremendous amount of overhead to doing anything on the nodes, which is one of the reasons why in the old days, the way you would get better performance on the nodes was to use Scala and as opposed to say Python. Apache Arrow blows that all away. It's not true anymore. Don't believe it. Because what Apache Arrow does is it does two things, which is really cool. One, it says, let's get rid of that JVM storage format that had been getting used in Spark. And instead says, let's use a much better column store compressed format that's better for everybody. And we'll all agree this is a better format. So Apache Arrow swaps out the legacy format of storage in the JVM and how it's working and replaces the format of Arrow, the column store efficient storage format. Not only does that benefit all of the users of the nodes, in other words, Scala as well, it also means that they're working on the same data format. So the serializing, deserializing is eliminated. You don't need to do it no more. And that means that Python, and for that matter R, can perform just as well as Scala, which is a big takeaway. So when people say you gotta write Scala to write performing code, you can tell them you don't. That's not true anymore. Now, in order to use Apache Arrow, you have to make sure that your Spark cluster is configured to have it turned on. There's a whole bunch of configurations, and I put a link in the notebook here. You can go and look at them. But if I use this SC Spark Context Get Conf and Get All, that's going to bring back all of the Spark configuration settings. And you can see there's a lot here. This is a lot of stuff going on. We're not interested in all of these, and most of the time, you don't even care. You're, you're in Databricks. Databricks is good at picking default settings and I find I'm showing you this but you're probably not going to need to worry about it either because if you noticed here I'm running the spark config get and when I do this it's going to come back and say true now what am I checking I'm checking whether Apache arrow is enabled so for what I have found for a while now is that by default when you create a new cluster unless you're creating a really old cluster I don't really know when they enable this but generally you're going to find it's probably already enabled uh, if you are using HD Insight or some other open source Spark, you're going to have to make sure that uh, Arrow is installed and enabled. To enable Apache Arrow, it's very simple. Spark config set, and then you just set the configuration, which is Spark SQL execution arrow enabled, and just set it to true. I'm running this. It's already set to true. It's not going to change anything, but that's all you would have to do. Outside of the Python calling SQL, I'm going to also, just directly in SQL, change the context to the AW project we created in an earlier video. And I want to use a particular table here, which is dim product, just to demonstrate some things. And then dim product, as you can see, it's just a product table. Before you go off and think, wow, this is cool. I'm going to write all user-defined functions everywhere because I know how and it's cool and I want to know my resume. Bear in mind, you should never write code you don't need to write. You should be really resistant to just writing new code if you don't have to. And one of the things I want to really drive home, and I've tried to drive home, is always check the available library of the Spark SQL to see if there's already a function you can use. Let me demonstrate some built-in scalar functions available in Spark SQL and encourage you to always check that first because you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to be writing custom code that has to be maintained, that can get bugs in it, that can have all kinds of problems when you don't need to. The Spark SQL code is something that Spark people have to worry about. You don't. And it generally is pretty well tested, so you shouldn't get problems with it nearly as much as your own code. Uh, I'm going to be doing a select from dim product, and I'm going to be pulling out the model name, and I'm just going to demonstrate a few string functions. The first one is INSTR. And what INSTR does, it says, find an occurrence of characters within a string. So it's going to find the occurrences of this string, M-O-U-N-T, within the model name because this is they sell mountain bikes and all kinds of things so I'm searching for any product related to mountain bikes. So that's going to bring back what position if any does it find that string. I'm going to run another function substring. I'm going to substring on model name starting at position one for a length of two so I should get two characters back the first two characters. I'm going to try another function which is translate and translate is simply going to replace the first letter O with the second letter I give it x within the model name which is the first parameter so what and what I'm going to do too is say only where the INSTR function finds mount meaning it found some is greater than zero meaning it found it if it comes out zero it means it couldn't find an occurrence 
And you can see, you know, it did what we wanted. Here's mountain bike, say socks. And then here you've got, it found M-O-U-N-T, position one. The first two characters are M-O. And you can see here it replaced the O with the capital X. So those are really handy scalar functions that I certainly wouldn't want to be writing myself. You might be saying, that's great, but I'm using data frames. I don't want to have to use everything in SQL to do this. Well, you don't. You can actually take advantage of those SQL functions we all know and love right from your good old Spark data frame. Let's show you how. So I'm going to load up the DIM product into SPDF DIM product data frame here. And then what I'm going to do is I have to tell it where to find them. I'm going to say from PySpark SQL functions. Notice it says PySpark SQL functions. So PySpark ha knows about, it has definitions for those SQL functions and you can just import them here. Good old functions we just used. And now I'm going to take my data frame. I'm going to run the select method on it and I'm using those functions. So I can now access those functions just as I did in SQL. I can even use it in my filter, the where clause on this, which is appended. And so with the data frame, I can get the same results. So that's pretty cool. So there's really no reason you need to write user-defined functions unless it's something you, you just can't get in the Spark SQL or anywhere else. And mind you, there may also be Python functions which are designed to take care of this. There may be PySpark functions. So what we're going to do now is, let's say, we want to do something like we want to create a column. We need to calculate the margin percent. What do I mean by the margin percent? I mean, essentially, when we sell a product, how much money as a percentage of the sales price are we making? That's kind of the margin percent. Is it 10% of the sales price? Is it 50%? And so I'm going to write a function here. We have a function margin percent underscore type. Product cost will be passed in and the sale amount will be passed in. And it's going to return the sale amount less the product cost. So you think about it, we sell it for $100, but we cost us $50 to make it. So the difference would be $50. And then we're going to divide that by how much we sold it for. And that's going to give us the percent, the margin that we have. And now that's going to create a function, which is great. But we're not really able to use it, for instance, in Spark SQL until we define it. We have to register it. So we use spark.udf.register. And this is the name we want to call it when we use it from Spark SQL. Can be different than the function name. So this is the function name here, right? Right here. But we're going to call it margin percent, no type, when we use it from Spark SQL. And notice we imported the double type because it needs to know the actual data type to expect it to give back, which is double. And now let's try it out. You can see here I'm saying select margin percent and I'm passing in total product cost and sales amount. I'm going to return that as gross margin. And then you can see I've got this other couple of columns are passing and I'm taking it from AW Project Fact Internet Sales. And I'm only going to bring back two rows because we don't really need a lot to see that it works. And you can see here, you know, it worked really well. We've got our gross margin percent calculated as we hoped. So it works. Now, the point to get here is I created a Python function and that function is distributed over the node and run in parallel. It's not just running on the head node or the driver node. What if I want to take that Python function and run it in parallel on the nodes, but I want to do it from Python code? Okay, it's a slightly different thing we need to do. We've already defined a function. So what here we need to do is we need to say from PySpark SQL function, we need to bring in another function called UDF. And we're also going to have to, as before, bring in double type. And then all we have to do is we're going to say UDF, and that's the function we created, right? Module percent type and double type, very similar to what we did before, but it's returning it to margin underscore percent underscore UDF. That's what we're actually going to need to use to get it to run over the cluster. Okay, so now we've got our data frame, right? And we're going to do a select again. And you notice that we actually are calling our margin percent UDF, which is the one we created here. And then we just calculate passing in the columns as strings that we want it to use as parameters. And then we can rename it as margin percent and that runs, and we can see, voila, it did what we needed. We have our sales amount, total product cost, and margin percent. So you may be wondering, is there a way that I can create my Python function and make it available to be used in my PySpark data frames in one step? And the answer is yes, and that's using a special decorator. So let's take a look at that. As before, we're going to import 
from PySpark SQL functions. We're bringing in the UDF function, but here we're going to be using a decorator when we create a function. So function decorators are great. What they essentially do is they can sort of rewrite the function on the fly. They extend the function. And so here we're bringing in the function decorator and notice it's double, which is the equivalent of what we did before, double type. And here is our function definition. So I'm creating the function definition all over again to demonstrate this. But in this case, instead of separately registering it to Python or creating a separate copy, I can just use the decorator and that will make margin percent decorator UDF available to my PySpark code. Now that I've done that, I can go down here and notice I'm using that and this is a data frame and I'm going to be using the select and running it here and it comes up and you can see margin percent so that worked. You still need to register, however, this new function, right? Margin percent decorator. So this is the function we actually created, margin percent decorator UDF. We still need to create or register a version of that for Spark SQL. So we're gonna to have to do that still. And once we've done that, we can now use it with Spark SQL. So you can see it's right here. Let me just carefully show you. This is the name of the function we called it. And now we can call it here. So once we've done that, I can run it and you get the gross margin. So the big saving of using the decorator, a little it's easier to read, I think, and it eliminates the need to assign and create a separate definition of the variable for using in PySpark. But aside from it with Spark SQL, there's really no difference there. And that's it for the demonstration. I hope you like that. There's more to this that we need to look at, but it's important that you understand how to use Python user-defined functions, in this case, scalar functions, and how to do them properly so that you can get good performance. This is an area that a lot of people post questions about, and they think they have to write Scala code and things like that, and they don't. And of course, make sure Apache Arrow is turned on. I can't think of any drawback to having it turned on and a lot of benefits, so just turn it on, enable it, and you should be good to go. So I hope you like this. Please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. It's great to see so many people getting benefit. Love to see the great comments and questions. Until next time, I'm Paul and Foyer. We're all in this together. Thank you.